Well, since you guys really seem to dig this the first time around, I'll do it again. I don't know why, this just feels right. They're butter knives, by the way. X-Men Days of Future Past came out this weekend, and before I go any further, I want to warn you, this is a spoiler-filled review. I have an original review posted on my channel that is spoiler-free. If you want to check that one out instead, go to that now because I'm about to talk about all kinds of stuff. I got to see X-Men Days of Future Past again tonight. I actually went to the drive-in theater with my fiance. It was a lot of fun. Sometimes we do that when it gets warmer outside. There's a drive-in somewhat close to our house. We'll see it for like the first time at a screening, but then we'll go to the drive-in for the second viewing. So we got to, to kind of relax and, you know, get back in the car. It's nice. There's stars are out and everything and you see Wolverine's butt. Yeah, that's a big spoiler. <laughs> At least it was for my fiance anyway, because she certainly enjoyed that scene. Damn, Hugh Jackman. So you guys know that I really love this movie, and I loved it because not only did it have really awesome action sequences, but it had such a good emotional core to it, in which all of the major characters were affected by this one central story. And one of the things I actually really liked about the movie, and that surprised me at first, was Wolverine wasn't really like ultimate hardcore badass dude in this movie. He had to work against the grain. He had to have peaceful thoughts as he continues to try to tell himself during the first act of this movie because he was the person in this movie that had to bring all these people together and he couldn't do that with his claws. He had to use his brain. He had to use his heart. And that was a really cool thing to see because you got to see a different side of Wolverine, a more experienced more used to the grind Wolverine who just wants to help and that was a really cool way to view his character because we got to see the really cool berserk badass Wolverine in the Wolverine that came out last year so it's cool to see a much more mellow reserved version and yes I did enjoy that scene in the beginning where he tears apart those guys and he like wakes up and he doesn't know where he is so much good humor was also thrown throughout this film a lot of it due to the time period it kind of reminded me of Star Trek 4 a voyage home where the entire Star Trek crew goes goes back to modern days and they're like confused about where they are. It was a sort of different take on the fish out of the water thing because he was around people he knows. It's just that he doesn't really know them yet. So there were so many cool character nuances that could come out of that and this film took a lot of benefit from that. Let's talk about the biggest ones first, the ones you guys probably want to hear me talk about the most. This film kind of alters the timeline of the previous X-Men films, particularly X-Men 3, because that was the one that Brian Singer was going to direct and then ended up doing Superman Returns. Why, dude? Why'd you do that? You should have just directed X-Men 3. It's almost like he knows that now because he's back doing another X-Men film trying to erase certain things that happened in X-Men 3. It's like he's like, yeah, I probably should have just done it the first time. After the timeline is altered, we see Jean Grey again. And not only her, but Cyclops is back. And I didn't want to mention this in my original review, but rarely ever do I scream or shout or say anything really during a film. But when Cyclops came on screen, I literally went, Oh shit, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Like I was like, oh, I wanna be quiet because I hate when people do that. But it just was like, oh, a Cyclops is back because that was one of the most disappointing things about X-Men 3 to me because it's Cyclops. I love Cyclops. It's like, why don't you just kill off Iron Man or something? It's Cyclops. And it was so cool to see Cyclops back in this movie. And I know that some fans of X-Men 3 are disappointed by the fact that that timeline is now basically crushed. But you know what? I like it. Cyclops is back. One of my favorite scenes in this film is the scene in which Magneto finally decides, you know what, I'm not going to have any more of this. The younger version, Michael Fassbender's version, and he decides to ambush everyone and sabotage everyone by using his powers to shoot a bullet through the air into Mystique. And then you get like these really great inserts of 1970s cameras capturing it. And you're like, you, you like feel the horror of it almost as if you are there. And like, that's what you would see on the news or whatever of that event. I thought that whole scene was very intense, the way it all played along. And there was a moment where Logan lost his his memory where I was like, wait, are they really going to do this memory loss thing? That usually doesn't work. And gratefully, it was just for that one scene. One of the things I loved about this movie was how it gave you an opportunity to see a lot of character deaths that you were like, oh, Storm's dying and Bishop and Iceman and everyone. They're all just dying. What's going on? Colossus got ripped in half. It was like when the dinosaurs in Lost World tore that guy in two. But because of the altered timeline thing, they were able to take advantage of those dramatic scenes 
scenes and then have them actually be back at the end. So it was kind of cool. It was like they were able to see what it would be like if all these characters did die. But then you had that moment where Wolverine's just walking around seeing everyone and you're like, okay, it's all back to normal. And you can definitely tell that Brian Singer made this film thinking like, okay, look, my films that I made, those X-Men films, those are my films. And someone came along and did stuff. I don't like that. I'm going to revert it to the way I had it. <laughs> and you know, in a way you could look at that and say, that's kind of dickish, but I like his story of X-Men. I like the way he handles the characters. And so I am fine with it. The one thing that did confuse me about the movie is that at the end of the Wolverine, he has his bone claws. And then in the beginning of this one, he's got his adamantium back again. So I don't really know. I'm assuming that they just kind of had to deal with that inconsistency because they were filming the film's pretty close back to back. So I don't really know about that one there. That's a little confusing to me. One of the biggest questions of this movie, and obviously it's not the kind of question that can be answered immediately because it ends on a cliffhanger where Mystique is impersonating Stryker. Now, if you know anything about the other films, Stryker is the person who got Wolverine his adamantium all throughout his body. If Mystique is impersonating him, what? Like, that's just brain explosion. I don't even know what that means, so we're gonna have to see. The end credit scene features a very small apocalypse. Now, I'm gonna be honest here, don't know much about the character of Apocalypse. I do, however, know that he's gigantic. So, I don't know. I actually, not, I... it was just nice to have an actual end credit scene after the Amazing Spider-Man 2 just had like a promotional spot for the X-Men Days of Future Past. It was cool to actually have an end credit scene that mattered. Jennifer Lawrence in this movie as Mystique just blew my mind. I mean, I enjoyed her in first class. She was good, but she just didn't have the flair and the intensity that Rebecca Romaine Stamos had for the action element of Mystique. She was good as Mystique. She captured the emotion and like the fear of that character, but she wasn't as cool, I guess. In this film, she was awesome, but she also retained that emotion. And I gotta say, the, the scene where she's like, she's got the guy trapped against the wall and she's just standing there with her leg on him, I was just, that was an enjoyable scene for me. The interplay between James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender in this movie is fantastic. The scene on the plane where they just have that argument where you can actually understand both sides. Like, it's one of those really great ways that you can actually relate to a villain. The best villains in film are the ones you are like, you know what, I actually understand where he's coming from. Like, the Joker in The Dark Knight makes sense. Everything he says makes sense. Darth Vader in the original Star Wars films, you understand why he is as messed up as he is. Even before the prequels, you understood that in the films because it was portrayed so well. You understand why Magneto is pissed and you understand why Xavier is pissed. It all works together because he has that great scene where he's yelling, he's like, all those, all of our brothers are dead and you didn't do anything to help us. And in some ways you can actually kind of side with Magneto a little bit. And so you can kind of understand where he's coming from. The scenes with Quicksilver were incredible. And as I said in my original review, that scene that I think is one of the best scenes I've ever seen in a comic book film was the scene where you see in slow motion, he's running in circles around the guys, he's positioning their arms to punch themselves in the face, he's moving the bullets. Not only was it very funny, but it was visually brilliant. Quicksilver in this movie was fantastic. I would have loved to see more of his character. I can understand why he wasn't around though, because he basically beat everyone, like instantly. <laughs> like when Magneto was doing everything with a gun, he'd just go like, zip, zip, zip. oh, I got it, sorry, you lose. Overall, X-Men Days of Future Past is a very great blockbuster because it has all those really awesome action scenes that are done well, but it also has such a great emotional core to it. And I love the way they fix certain things that I was kind of upset about from the other X-Men films. We can actually start fresh now and have some of these characters back. And I'm assuming they're gonna find other interesting and humor-filled ways to progress the series because Wolverine now has this knowledge, Xavier has this knowledge, and I'm wondering how Magneto is gonna play into all that. And of course, the ending with Mystique impersonating Stryker, I can't wait to see how they play that out as well. What did you guys think of X-Men Days of Future Past? I had a great time with this movie and from what I'm hearing quite a bit of other people did as well. Thanks as always for watching guys and if you like this you can click right here and get stuck manized. Yeah.